Good evening. I'd like to call to order the March 27, 2014 Scarborough Sanitary District monthly meeting. We'll start off with roll call. Dave Nelson? Here. Charlie Anderson is absent. Nick Rico? Here. Ben Viola? Here. Rob McSorley? Present. Seth Garrison? Here. And I am Chairman Jason Greenleaf. First order of business, approval of the February 27, 2014 regular monthly meeting minutes. So moved. Seconded. Any errors or omissions? None from the group. All in favor of approval? Abstain. One abstention from Seth, who was not present last month. Next order of business, superintendent and operations report. Dave? Okay. Um, uh, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of February is included in your packet. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits for all parameters. We, we, we achieved 93% uh, biochemical oxygen demand removal and 95% total suspended solids removal. Uh, the respective concentrations were 16 milligrams per liter and 12. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of February is also included in your packet. As you can see, our flows are back down. As noted last month, we lost the transducer at the Fog Road pump station, which is the reason for the reported zero flow in the beginning part of the month. The temporary transducer was installed to keep the station operational. When the permanent transducer was installed, we began receiving the flow data again. <coughs> we continue with the uh, pilot test of the uh, Penn Valley pump for pumping the, the sludge to the uh, Fournier Press. It's been about two months now, and it continues to meet our expectations. Um, it looks like we'll be moving forward and uh, placing an order for a second pump and installing these two pumps in the near future. Uh, the main rural water uh, 2013 rate survey is expected to be completed by the end of the month. As soon as I get a copy, I will, I'll post it on our website and, as well as distribute it to the trustees. We have advertised uh, for the clerk position and will be conducting interviews starting April 2nd. Um, let's see. The, in the uh, blower building, the original um, dehumidifier was has not been operational for a number of years now. Consequently, we, um, we removed the unit along with uh, the associated ductwork that was provi thus providing additional space to access process pumps. In place of the ex existing dehumidifier, we have been using a commercial grade portable de dehumidifier which uh, works very well. The clam bake has completed the installation of their mechanical grease trap. They still need to complete the installation of the unit that serves the washing machine, but uh, due to weather issues, they've got to wait for that to uh, turn before they can complete that installation, but that will be done shortly. That's a minor piece of the work. Uh, on March 25th, I attended a seminar on uh, managing fats, oils, and grease um, and setting up uh, fog programs at wastewater treatment facilities. This was uh, um, held up at the uh, Booth Bay Harbor uh, wastewater treatment plant. On the 26th, we had uh, five members of our staff who attended um, a Dig Safe training course as a uh, refresher course. In the next residential billing, uh, we we will be including a copy of the Don't Flush Baby Wipes educational brochure that was provided at the January uh, trustees meeting. So you might be seeing one in your own bills. And on March 4th, we conducted a tour of the wastewater treatment facility for 10 Girl Scouts and three of their leaders. Uh, for this tour, I was able to borrow some educational materials from Maine Wastewater Control Association, uh, which they had actually just created um, uh, the previous week. They had finished putting it together. And I have attached a couple photos uh, from the tour. It was a very uh, good tour, and I got some great feedback from it. And that's all I have at this moment. Thanks, Dave. Any questions for the superintendent? Rob? I, I like the uh, little thing that you put in relative to the tour you gave. And I was wondering if maybe we could put that up on the website, create a page, and, you know, that might look nice uh, part of our public community outreach. 
I can do that. Um, actually, Maine Wastewater Control Association President Aubrey Strauss actually also attended the tour, oh, and she had taken some of those photos that you see there. And uh, in prior to taking the photos, she did check to see with the uh, Girl Scout troop if it was okay to use those photos, um, and they said it was that they sign off on that type of. Oh, thing. that's great. So I I can do that. Kudos to you. Very nice stuff. Other questions for the superintendent? There are none. We'll move on to correspondence. First item is the DEP inspection report of March 5, 2014. Attached is a copy of the DEP inspection report related to the, ins uh, to the inspection conducted on February 6, which I did speak towards at the last trustees meeting. Um, I'd like to quote Mr. Height's closing observations, which the, uh, the staff really deserves the credit for this. Um, and I quote, although no individual subject ab above was rated excellent, the overall operation and maintenance of this facility is excellent. And I really want to thank the staff for what they do uh, in and around the plant. Great. Kudos to the staff there for sure. Moving on to old business. We don't have any this month, so we'll strike that. And before we start with new business, I'd like to entertain a motion for an amendment to the agenda. So moved. Second. All right. We will add that to item F if uh, we're all in agreement on that. All in favor of approval? So we're making it D1 and we have the budget the summary. Budget summary okay. Or switch them around. Oh, sure. Yeah, we can do that. D1 we, it we'll is. We'll make the budget summary F and then the other one E. <laughs> That's easy for you. All in favor of that amendment to the budget? I'm sorry, to, to, the, <laughs> to the agenda, sorry about that, everybody. Can I, can, right. can I go back to old business for just a sec? Certainly. Although we don't have anything on the agenda. Um, what's the status of the audit? I, I noticed that last month they were finishing up. Yeah, they, they have completed it. I've gotten a draft copy of it, and um, I've provided them with my comments, and they just owe us the, the final version. Okay. So we, we just probably missed it by a week. And speaking towards that, actually, I, I can ask this question. Uh, typically, we do not have the, uh, the auditor come to the meeting, but he has always spoken towards saying that he's willing to come if he would like, like him to talk about the audit. And um, I don't need a decision now, but some, you can get back to me after the some time between now and the next meeting. Okay. All right. Uh, now we'll move on to new business, and the first item is 16 Tall Pines Road. Um, 16 Tall Pines Road, and it's a municipal release deed. This property had two liens that were discharged by the district on January 15, 2010. However, the discharge occurred after the eight-month period. With that, a municipal release deed is required to provide a clear title. I recommend approval of the municipal release deed for 16 Paul Pines Road. Motion so to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Any questions? None. All in favor of approval? None opposed. Next item is Sawgrass Subdivision on Sawyer Road. Um, I do want to point out we do have a representative here of the engineering firm that is willing to answer some questions on the project. Um, with that, I'll, I'll move forward. On behalf of Star Homes, Inc., uh, BH2M is requesting district approval for approximately a 2,175-foot sewer extension and to connect to the sewer 23 single-family homes in the proposed Sawgrass subdivision off of Sawyer Road as described in the attached letter. Uh, and shown on the, on the plans provided. The subdivision would be serviced by a low-pressure sewer system in accordance to district policies and discharged into an existing gravity sewer located on Sawyer Road at the intersection with Imperial Lane. The existing manhole and, and Imperial Lane will be replaced with a five-foot diameter manhole. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Uh, the project is within the original service area. Uh, the original lot had an allocation for one residential dwelling unit. With that, each of the remaining 22 single-family homes 
is subject to the capacity reserve fee. This capacity reserve fee is based on a single family resident re residential dwelling unit without accessory units. Any additional homes or accessory units in, in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee per home is $2,820.53 based on the March 2014 and it is adjusted monthly based on the Engineering News Rec and Construction Cost Index. Based on the current ENR, the total capacity reserve fee for the 22 homes is $62,051.77. This fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit. Clean out manholes shall be Schedule 80. Uh, ball valves shall be True Union 2000 industrial ball valves or equal with uh, dual O-rings. Couplings shall be female polypropylene cam lever couplings, including a female plug coupling as manufactured by Banjo or Equal. Manual covers shall be district standard manhole covers. Uh, positive uh, ownership, positive displacement pumps are the and building wells which are installed as part of the low pressure sewer system shall be purchased and owned and operated by the property owner. Release the owners and occupants of the premise service by the low pressure sewer system shall expressly release the Scarborough Sanitary District from any and all liabilities associated with the use, operation, and malfunction of the low pressure sewer system. Detectable underground utility marking tape. All force mains, including home services, shall have detectable underground utility marking tape placed approximately three feet below grade directly above the uh, force main. I'm going to add one here in that the SDR uh, 11 um, force main pipe shall be the color green. I did check and it is available. Um, Final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. Sewer extension permit is required. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. Sewer permit is required for each house. A complete application and associated fee shall, submit, shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no sewer, sewer, site sewer work shall be completed. Installation of sewer service inspected and approved by the district and professionally surveyed record plans, both paper and electronic, to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Motion to approve, Mr. Jaber, with the caveat attached by the superintendent. Second. Motion and a second. Questions? Okay. I'm going to start to my left. You can start down there. Ben. Oh, first, okay. So <clears throat> on the laterals, is it at the property line that? That the owner picks up, or do they go all the way to the, the uh, we, we, uh, sewer line? They we uh, own within the right of way. Just so within the right of way. Okay. The right so of way. they property owner only picks up at, at the property line. Yeah. That being said, if there ever is a blockage in the <coughs> sewer service, that by sewer use ordinance, they're not allowed to be discharging anything that causes a blockage, since they're only one on that service. It's kind of hard to deny that they're the cause of the blockage. Do we uh, do we have a standard specification package that we issue to folks so they understand the types of fittings, the structures, the materials? No, I'm I'm starting to work on putting together some of those items. So. Okay, thanks. Rob. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. Did you? Oh, sorry, I <laughs> didn't mean to jump on Rob's. No, nope. <laughs> I'm curious I, about I, I, um, an association. Is there a sewer association that they all maintain these pump stations together, or is it every man, woman, and child for himself? If there is no association here. The, where the main is within the right of way, uh, which the district would own and operate, um, and any private infrastructure and private property would be their own responsibility to maintain, no different than uh, their water services or if they had a septic tank or their roof. The reason I ask is these are special systems that are made to work with the same pumps. Mm -hmm. Pump breaks down in five to ten years, which is likely, and the homeowner doesn't want to pay for any one bump, wants to put in a regular one from Home Depot on his own. So what's to stop them? Well, they can, but then they may also have another failure very quickly as a result of that. Good point. 
Okay. Just checking. Anything else from my left? Ralph. Down to the right end, though. <laughs> uh, I talked with Dave a little early. I have a little concern here. We got existing facilities right now on Sawyer Road, and there'll be a point at which we actually have three different facilities running parallel to each other. And, you know, I talked to Dave a little bit about, you know, you know, what's the cost difference of putting in a lift station for this development? It's, it's probably not feasible based upon that it would cost each owner about $30,000 for each uh, house to be able to put a district lift station in. I guess we, we couldn't take one of that many units anyway. However, I think that a system can be designed that would tap into the six inch force main and be able to be sized and have the appropriate types of pumps. They may not be ones, they may be ones, but then we don't have another facility within Sawyer Road to maintain for, uh, what, 1,100 feet or so with a couple manholes and a low pressure force main. You know, I would like to see them look at whether they can tap into the six inch in, in, in the district not be burdened by another facility along Sawyer Road. Can I comment on that? Sure. Yeah, uh, Rob and I did speak about that, and um, frankly, that is one, one item that um, both Gary Howard and I had been considering um, quite a bit. Uh, there is that six inch force main and another four inch force main on the road there and tapping into that force main I, 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 I do feel it is a very viable option and um, Gary and I actually we, we just we couldn't come to a final decision on it and so we this is the uh, we went with the standard approach um, like this but it's certainly something I think we I can work with the engineer to evaluate and see whether we can make it work we have the engineer here this evening. Would you mind speaking maybe about the feasibility of that approach? I, I think that's certainly something that, if they've said, I think that's certainly something that could be feasible. We could certainly look into that if that's something the board uh, would like us to do. Okay. So I think we need to make it work. Okay. It be, behoove us to do it. What? Behoove us to have it done that way. Yes, it would. Mr. Chairman, I have a question about the E1 system in general. Um, as I understand it, don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> as I understand it, the, the E1 system yep. works on the basis that each individual pump pumps the entire route of the combined force main, not only the service that it's in, but it, that common force main that's, uh, I forgot, is it an inch and a half or or it increases in diameter as it goes farther up the chain it's, with it's more and more discharges to it. It's two inch right. at its furthest point and three inch at, it, at its lowest. Okay. Um, if it were to tap into a six inch force main, would that be the end of it? Or would it actually have to force the waste through that six inch force main up to the terminus? Well, it, 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 you'd have to combine the system that is connecting to the six inch pipe. So it's a matter of running a model of, of both systems to see what the overall impact would be for that section where they'd be combined. Okay. And that's what you would do to determine whether it is feasible or not. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering about it would the... Be, it would basically be a matter to determine whether the pumps that we have uh, proposed in the system are, are adequate enough to... Mm -hmm. to Especially handle. the one at the far end of the system. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. These E1 pumps actually um, generate quite, have the ability to generate high heads. You can go up to 185 psi. That's good. That's good. Only as good as the pipe, however. The pipe's right at 20. <laughs> right. Uh, Rob, what are you comfortable with for next steps? Would you like to amend our approval? I think they need to look at it and come back to us. You know, I, I'm not, I don't want conditional approval. I, I don't want to maintain another facility in Sawyer Avenue. 
I don't know about anybody else, but I, I think it's, you know, and I think Nick can probably speak to this. Most utility districts don't want to see parallel installations in a right away. They want to see one installation in their facility. So I would agree with Rob that, you know, we call it spaghetti when we have two, three, four pipes all coming every which way, and each has to be 10 feet away from the water district's um, so, uh, water main. Well, you've got three in there, and they all have to be 10 feet away. They're going to be close to each other if they got to stay away from that water district. Would you be comfortable right. if I worked with the engineer and made this work? That give up approval based on that. If it moves forward with a six inch, or you still want it to come back in front of the board? But put a timeline on this. They were hoping to build this spring. Um, we're working with DEP. I suspect we'll probably have approval within the month from them. <coughs> no, at, the, at which the point the we need to go back. Month isn't to that to the planning board anyway. So you know, if they still got to go through DEP, or if the other <laughs> other. Uh, Subject comes up, uh, we could possibly, if if we made it work, uh, call a special meeting, if need be. I, I suspect we'll be before the planning board in April. Um, may even be May. So. Um, well, come back here in April. <clears throat> We'd love to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we need to move forward here. Um, we could either move to table. I make a motion to table this item for f further consideration. Seconded. I have a motion and a second. Any questions on that? No questioning at table motion. I'm sorry? No. There's no uh, discussion oh, on okay. discussion the table. 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 Okay. Thank you. Then all in favor of approval of tabling motion. Thank you. Next item, the corner of Ginn Road and Payne Road. Thanks for coming. This project was initially approved in February 2013. A copy of the approved letter is attached. Again, we have a representative of the engineer, engineering firm here if, we have, uh, if the trustees have any questions. Uh, pri Priority Group LLC is requesting district approval for a change to the project that includes the addition of a car wash and the elimination of two diesel fuel pumps. The car wash will utilize a water reclaim system as shown on the plans and in the detailed drawing. It is estimated that the water usage of the car wash portion only is 2,992 gallons per day based on the peak quarter of a similar facility located in Stanford. Originally, the convenience store flow was estimated at 1,218 gallons per day, eliminating two fuel pumps at 100 gallons per day each, and the addition of a car wash flow increases the projected wastewater flow for the convenience store slash car wash to 4,010 gallons per day. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The approved average daily flow for each facility are presented below in the following table. Any future flows in excess of the approved amount are subject to additional approvals. And that's uh, 4,010 for the store car wash, 2,740 for the restaurant with the drive through and 100 for a six skin road slash warehouse for a total of 6,850. Project is outside the original service area, thus subject to the capacity reserve fee, reserve fee based on the approved wastewater flow. Future flows and excess of the approved flows is subject to additional capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee is 1410 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on engineering news record. Um, based on the, the, the current ENR, capacity reserve fee uh, is presented in the following table. It's $56,541 for the convenience store slash station, $28,363 for the restaurant with the drive through and $1,410 for Six Skin Road with the warehouse for a total of $86,314. Passive reserve fee is due prior to issuing to the sewer permits. Final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of the sewer permit. Um, free sand oil water interceptor permit application, a copy. Complete application associated fee for the grease, grease sand oil water interceptor permit shall be submitted to the district at the time of request for the sewer permit. 
A sewer permit is required. The fee is $100 per service. Uh, connection for a total of $300. Installation of each sewer service shall be inspected by the district and record plans, both paper and electronic, to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, with the caveats attached by the superintendent. Second. Motion and second. Any questions? I'll start to my right, in fairness. Oh, I get go first this time? <laughs> you do. <laughs> What, what's the service station that's going to go there? As I understand, it's the uh, Norea base station. Okay. And they may be selling urban Okay. Is the, the, the car wash going to be separate from the? Same operator. Same operator? It's closer to my house. I like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the question is the condition of the operation of the facility and us granting approval that the water reclaim system be in operation? That will be part of the grease oil water interceptor permit. It, uh, there's a requirement to maintain it. Uh, we set the frequency of uh, maintenance in that permit, and we check it on a regular basis. Okay, because I have seen some fail and people bypassing around those. That will not happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Dave. Ben. So, we approved something back in February 2013. Right. They, there was a fee attached to that. Did we get a portion of that fee already, or we haven't started? No, they, they they, they, this project got delayed uh, for about a year, um, and they just recently started moving forward with this change, so we have we have received no monies as of this time. Nick? Um, I was just curious. Uh, I thought I read in the notes that two fuel pumps are getting eliminated. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think there was going to be a fuel station there. Two diesel fuel pumps that, ah. were, that were associated to uh, okay. uh, tractor trailer units. Good. All right. Now I understand. And the other question I had, and I think we discussed this when it first came up, and I can't remember the answer, so I'm going to ask again. Why is the convenience store service coming to Payne Road instead of going to the sewer line that's much closer behind there that goes on to Ginn Road. That'd be a sewer service for the warehouse, which is a separate property. That's, they're they're going to have an easement through the property uh, that will be servicing the warehouse back, back on uh, Ginn Road. And um, so we have basically three separate buildings and the third that you don't see is off the plan, which would be up there. Right there. So each um, building would have its own sewer service. How big is that service? I think it's eight, either six or eight, I can't remember what. The reason why I'm confused is because there, there's a note on the that plan that says six inch sanitary service inserted team. Connection to existing main. Oh, they didn't give me a. When did you forget? Not attached to the letter? Not attached? That's not attached? Yeah. Must have fallen out. I think you just wrote that and used it for something. Um, so that would be a, then, I can't remember. The, it's six inch. Right. Yeah. Uh, but my point is, why not make it eight? Connect everything to it and be done. You wouldn't have to go tearing up Payne Road. Well, if the district wants to take ownership of that plan? main and call it the uh, a, a sanitary gravity sewer service that we maintain, um, then each building could have a sewer service attached to that. Alternatively, you cannot have shared sewer services per building in accordance with our codes. Is oh, use I was. Yep. I didn't that? realize that. Remember that Sorry, text? my mistake. Fair question. You'd be, perhaps you can answer. Oh, that's what what portion one. of the subsurface infrastructure has already been installed? Because I've noticed there's some foundations that have already been laid. So, is most of this piping already installed? Uh, just for the record, Steve Bushy with FST. I don't believe the uh, sewer uh, yeah, pieces. Is have been installed yet. They're waiting because they have to pay the okay. pass through reserve fee. And uh, to a certain extent, I'm, I was here tonight and I needed to apologize because the process that we went through here, Ben's right, we got approval back in February of last year. 
uh, the proposal at that time included a couple of diesel islands. The project laid around a little bit, and then they made some decisions about uh, using a car wash, eliminating the two diesel islands. We went back in May and 1st of June before the planning board and got approvals. And uh, as is sometimes the case, things slipped through the cracks, and I didn't come back to force you folks uh, to get the car wash approved. And then the project really laid around for six or seven months. And, uh, you know, we move on to different things. And until it went under construction again, uh, we've been involved just on the periphery uh, with the project and with the owner and the uh, contractor. And uh, just last week it came to my attention that, oh, geez, by the way, we technically hadn't gotten uh, an amended approval for the car wash piece. So uh, that's why we're back here considering that uh, for tonight. So they started construction four or five, six weeks ago and did the cutting of the trees and stripping of the ground. And uh, I understand they've started some of the foundation work. They started the drainage work. They had to build a detention pond and so forth. But uh, they're anxious, as I understand it, to, to get moving on the, the sewer pieces as well. And so here we are. Not a great excuse, but I appreciate the opportunity that we've had to be able to come back and remedy a little oversight. Shall we recommend them? Yeah. Any additional questions? They have been. <laughs> <laughs> Any additional questions before we move forward? None. We have a motion and a motion. second. Oh, we have a motion already? Yes. We did have a motion, okay. correct? Yes, yes. Yes, we do have a motion and a second. All in favor of approval? Not opposed. Next item is the El Rayo Restaurant, 245 U.S. Route 1. On behalf of the owners of the El Rayo um, Restaurant, Hayes and Associates is requesting district approval to connect the discharge into the sewer wastewater from the proposed restaurant. They, they have proposed converting the existing 4,500 square foot retail building, previously Cumberland Farms, at 245 U.S. Route 1 into a new restaurant. The existing building is currently connected to the sewer. However, the proposal is to abandon the existing connection and to connect via a new, su new service that will discharge into an existing manhole. The facility will have a total occupant load of 99, of which 11 occupants will be employees and the remaining 88 will be dining or bar patrons. The proposal includes a 2,000-gallon grease trap. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The approved average daily wastewater flows for this facility is 1,892 gallons per day. This is based on 20 gallons per day per seat, 12 gallons per day per employee. If flows exceed this estimate, additional approvals for the excess flows are required. The project is within the original sewer service area, and then the building had an allocation of 480 gallons per day. The difference between the approved flow and the allocation is 1,412 gallons per day. The difference is subject to the capacity reserve fee. The following capacity reserve fee is 14.10 per gallon and is adjusted monthly. Based on the ENR, um, the total capacity fee for the 14.12 gallons per day is $19,902. Uh, at $19,909.20 and is due prior to issuance of the sewer permit. Any excess flows above the 1892 are subject to additional capacity reserve fees. The inspection manhole will be required at the intersection of the sanitary waste and the grease trap effluent. The two access openings shall be, to the grease trap shall be brought to grade with manhole covers to facilitate inspection and maintenance. The complete application associated fee for the grease, sand, oil, water interceptor permit shall be submitted to the district at the time a request for a sewer permit is submitted. Final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. A uh, sewer permit is required. Complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to the permit being executed. No site work shall, sewer work shall be completed until that time. Installation of the sewer surface inspected by the district and professionally surveyed record plans, both paper and electronics, be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Motion to approve this assembly with the caveats attached by the superintendent. Second. Motion and second. Questions? Rob. 
Is there a particular reason why they can't use the existing service? Is it an elevation problem or an inconvenience problem? It's uh, it's more. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to use the phrase inconvenience. Your your phrase of inconvenience, but it's it ends up with being a indirect flow um, into the sewer service into the our sewer um, as a re because we'd have to diagonally go across the parking lot and then take another bend to connect to the sewer versus coming straight out from the grease trap into the sewer service. So there'd, there'd be a result of two, two additional bends in the longer sewer service. Is there, you know, are they going right into the manhole or are they going to make another cut into the gravity we, line? We go right into that manhole right there, core right into the manhole. Yeah. Um, be nice if we got a plan that would more readable, mm. you know, in the future, you may want to... I actually have a question on that. It's referred to, and maybe it's my own ignorance in living in the town for my whole life. Has Route 1 always been referred to as Main Street? Yeah, that's... Uh... 245 Main Street is referred to here in the letter on those plans, and I don't know that that's... The official name is... 245 U.S. Route 1. U.S. Route 1. Um, when they did the ArcGIS, they found that we had multiple names for roads, like U.S. Route 1, yep. Main Street. Main Street, right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Did you have any further questions, Rob? When do they open? <laughs> He's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> they are in the process of demoing the building and doing the internal plumbing right now, waiting for our approval, so... All right. Just a quick. Uh, how often uh, would that grease trap be inspected? Uh, at least quarterly, uh, and more frequently if uh, if we find that it requires more inspection. That's based on our new inspection yeah, we, report. Yeah, we, we we I've been working and developing a fog program. Oh, good. Um, and the the grease interceptor application permit that I refer to is something I generated recently. And um, it's, we've been putting a lot of emphasis on grease traps. Fine. Um, so. All right. We have a motion and a second. If there's no more questions, all in favor of approval. None opposed. Next. Oh, I'm sorry. The next item would be D1, and that is 29 Ponzi Road for our amended agenda. This just came to me um, two days ago um, it, as a result of a property sale. Um, my other enterprises, uh, this is for 29 Pond View Road, uh, my other enterprises incorporated is requesting district approval for approximately a 230 foot, two inch low pressure sewer extension and to connect to the, the sewer, uh, the single family home without an accessory unit located at 29 Pond View Drive off of Pleasant Hill Road as described in the attached letter dated March 26, 2014. The home would be served um, by a low pressure sewer system according to district policy and discharge into the existing low pressure sewer system located on Pondview Drive. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The project is outside the service area and thus subject to a capacity reserve fee. This fee is based on a single family residential dwelling unit without an accessory unit. Any changes to, to this use are subject to additional approvals and, and that's reserve fees. The current fee per dwelling unit is 28.20.53 and is adjusted monthly. Uh, based on the current ENR, the total reserve fee due is $2,820.53, of which can, must be paid prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit. Positive displacement pumps and building laterals, which are installed as part of the low-pressure sewer system, shall be purchased, owned, and operated by the property owner. Owners and occupants of premises serviced by a uh, low-pressure sewer system shall especially release the Scarborough Sanitary District from all any and all liabilities associated with the use and operation or malfunction of the system. All SDR 11 uh, pipes shall be the color green. All force mains, including home services, shall have detected <coughs> underground utility marking tape placed approximately three feet below grade, uh, directly above the force main. 
Uh, sewer extension permit is required. Complete application and associated fee submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension. Uh, sewer permit is required. Um, Complete application associated fee submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to being, the permit being executed, no sewer site work shall be completed. Installation of the sewer service is inspected and approved by the district, and professionally surveyed record permits, both paper and electronic, be submitted to the district upon the completion of the project. Mr. Chairman, before we move forward on this item, uh, I do notice that the second page of this application has a calc sheet with my uh, firm's name on it. Uh, this project is not being done by my firm. However, at the board's discretion, I'll recuse myself from consideration of this item so that there's no uh, appearance of impropriety. Okay. Thank you, Rob. I'll make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, with the caveats attached to the superintendent. Have a we have a motion and a second. Any questions? So, where where do we own here on this private sewer? Uh, we we would own what's in the uh, right of way of the roadway. We we currently own the private the uh, low pressure sewer all the way up to the um, the terminus manhole that's in Pond View, which is um, just that, just uh, between house number 21 and 25. Um, so we own everything down Pond View all the way on to Pleasant where it ties into uh, Gravity Main on Pleasant. So a follow-up to that would be, shouldn't we have a, a stamp plan on this as well because they're, they're, they're moving manholes in here? Um, I, we don't have a stamp plan on this right now. Should we? I don't know. We have a, is that our policy on all? I think it's a state requirement. It's actually for design of sewer systems. <clears throat> you know, you, you, if you were just doing the laterals, I mean, the yeah. service lines, it's one thing. But when you're moving manholes out in the street. That's what I thought. Yeah. Additional questions? I had a, just a quick question about the pipe. I see that it's polyethylene pressure pipe. I always thought that was only black. I didn't know you can get it in green. Yeah, any color you want, just about now. Good the, to uh, know. Gas company uses yellow. Um, yellow and black. Black with yellow stripes. Uh, blue for water. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Good to know. Ben, any additional thoughts on your... I think we might need to table this one, too. Oh, no, I, I think you could require that you get a PE. Yeah, right. It is already in the... No. I thought you meant that. No, no, no. Oh, it's not. Our, our drawing is stamped. I attached uh, our, our oh, Pond View our... drawing. Oh, okay. Uh, back when Pond View sewer, uh, low pressure sewer was initially installed. I understand. Okay, the no, the electronic copy does not have a, a stamp on it. I just wanted to make you aware that we do have an a stamped original in the, our file. Okay. Right. Oh, of the Earth Tech plan. Yeah, the Earth Tech plan, correct. Okay. And this new proposed sewer system, as Ben points out, isn't just a lateral and one pump. It's, it's, a, it's a small sewer extension. That would sewer extension, a stamp. which would require a stamp. So my suggestion is that we table it till we get a stamp drawing. Either that or we approve it and let it go until Dave sees that. Um, stamp drawing. I don't care which way we go. Yeah, prove it, but no underway, nothing underway until we get a stamp, uh, uh, a fully stamped drawing. I'll amend my uh, motion to that. We have an amended motion to for approval second. with. We have an amended second. Who made who second at that? You did. Oh, you I did. Did. I'll amend the second. <laughs> 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 so I just want to explain a little bit too that. You know, it looks like you're just moving a manhole or something. It's pretty simple, but you get into the process, okay, well, we'll move in two manholes and three, you know, it's, it's actually a sewer. Once you get past the lateral, you're into the sewer, which I think state law requires to be done by a professional engineer. I think it's a great way to do it, though. 
All right, just to reiterate, the new motion, or the amended motion, I'm sorry, was <laughs> to move forward with approval uh, with the caveat that we have a stamp plan in place before any work takes place. And we do have a motion and a second on that. Second. All in favor of approval? None opposed and one abstention. All right. And item E on the agenda was the budget summary. Was it a two month budget summary? Uh, yes, and it is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion to second. Any questions on the budget summary? All in favor of approval? None opposed. The public that was attending has since left, so there are no public in attendance anymore and no public comments. So I'll move on to trustee comments. I'll start to my right with Rob. Uh, once again, uh, thank you so much to the staff for their hard work. Uh, just another excellent report from BEP. Also, kudos to uh, Mr. Hughes once again for the tour that he did uh, in the public outreach that he's been trying to do uh, for the district. And uh, with that, uh, that's all I got. Steve, to reiterate the point, uh, I just can't thank the staff enough for all the work that they're doing, all that they've done for us, uh, cost savings efficiency uh, it's played out very very well uh, thank you again Ben uh, no comments tonight thank you but uh, you want to uh, I guess I do have a comment uh, congrats, uh, I'd like to appreciate the, the staff for the work they do they do a great job Seth. Um, just a, a quick uh, point here I'd love to see in a future meeting talk about um, our investment strategy for our investment income I noticed that we had zero investment income uh, and talk about you know what mix we would be comfortable with there if there's maybe another mix that might give us a little bit more interest all right um, I'll start with kudos again great report from the main DEP good job Dave and all the people down at the plant um, <coughs> I also want to extend my condolences to the Risbera clan. Um, Rocky is a pillar of the community, and we'll all miss him, especially here at the uh, sanitary district. After all the work he's done for us, and you know, building probably half of Scarborough, um, we appreciate it. Rocky, June, uh, we really appreciate it, and um, we'll miss you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, that leaves me. I uh, also would like to thank the staff for another great inspection and fantastic comments from Mr. Height, um, and also to echo Nick's comments regarding uh, the passing of Rocky Risbear II. Uh, the Risbear family has a great working relationship with the district, has done a lot. We've called on them numerous times at, uh, in the middle of the night to repair broken mains and other things. So. Uh, condolences certainly go out to that family and, and also from from my family to theirs, uh, wishing them all their best and uh, condolences. So with that, I uh, will entertain a motion. So moved. Seconded. Motion second. All in favor of adjournment. We're adjourned.